Hello, I'm Nigel Griffiths, so I work in IBM Power Systems Advanced Technology Support in Europe. In this video, we'll be looking at installing Ubuntu 14.10 that came out uh, last week and running it on a Power 8 machine under Power VM. Now, Power VM, of course, has been out for what is it, 10 or 15 years, uh, highly advanced, high performance, and quite a luxurious operating environment. Of course, here we have Ubuntu, which is compiled Little Endian, that's the LE. All the operating systems, including the VO server with PowerVM, are installed and run as big Endian operating systems. Now we've got a little Endian operating system running amongst it. And quite honestly, when I did this, I fell off my chair thinking, whoa, I didn't think that was going to work. Uh, but it does. So let me explain what I did to get it running. Before we go any further, better qualify to highlight the fact of what it is and isn't supported and what seems to work. First of all, we have the number one, the Power KVM machines. They're the L models for the Linux only models for the Power 8 machines at the scale out end. Uh, you switch that into the Opal firmware mode as opposed to the Power VM mode. And then you can run a guest virtual machine on top of Power KVM. And uh, Ubuntu 14.4 and 14.10 work fine in that. That's been available for uh, six or seven months. And uh, that's all fully supported once you've paid for support, of course. Uh, that's bread and butter. That's working fine. There's also a way of running Ubuntu uh, native on the machine. Again, under the Opal firmware. There's a developer works article describing uh, what to do there. But that is at your own risk. Um, I think some people feel that that might be... Uh, better for performance and things, although Ubuntu on power is still fairly new. I think we'll see uh, performance improvements uh, in the next six months. Number three is what we're covering in this video. We're talking about running Ubuntu on top of Power VM. Power VM is a bit of a bucket containing the, the Power Hypervisor, the VO servers, the HMCs, all that sort of stuff. Here though, we're running Ubuntu 14.10 that installs and runs OK. Again, this is at your own risk. It's not fully supported yet. Uh, IBM has yet to complete its full testing. Number four, I've also tried the earlier Ubuntu 14.4 or 14.4.1 on the same Power 8 machines, and I couldn't get that to actually work. We're also not going to cover early machines, Power 6, 7, 7 Plus. Um, if you actually give them a try and you get them working with Ubuntu, uh, do put a comment in this uh, end of this video so we can uh, see what people are having success with. I actually first tried my Power um, E870 machine uh, running with a single VO server and um, that worked fine, that's the first one that I tried and then I thought well let's try it on my uh, older uh, S824 that's been out a while, that's actually dual VO server and using the shared storage pools and the virtual uh, DVDs and that worked fine as well and that's got to the official firmware in here at the moment my E870 is under the early ship program and running some, some beta code so it's good to check that the currently available scale out machines are actually running Ubuntu 14.10 uh, without any problems so next then you need to find out where from Ubuntu, do you get your DVD images to run it on power? Um, if you go to their standard website, of course, it's all about uh, the x86 and installing it in various ways onto your laptop or your PC type uh, machine. This is the uh, URL at the top in here for the place to go to get the download, or oh, that's where I went, and you're looking for this file which has uh, PPC, that's the PowerPC64, EL. The EL tells you obviously that it's little Indian. Oh well. It's close enough. Um, and that's the version we're running. It comes in at 558 megabytes. This is what the website looks like when you get in here, and it's this one in here. Don't get confused with the, the Power PC version above that runs on the Power 5 and the Apple Mac type environment. We're going to run Ubuntu, my standard configuration for uh, all running uh, Linuxes on my Power VM machines. I'm going to use the virtual network with C failover. This stops me having to go into uh, Linux bonding networks together for resilience. And at the back end, I'm going to have a virtual disk from a shared storage pool over two uh, VO servers. That allows me to do VO server level mirroring onto my uh, back end disks and gives me good performance too. In addition, then, we're going to use the virtual DVD, so I'm going to drag that um, Ubuntu ISO image into my VO server and mount that over vSCSI into Linux. The rest of the movie is going to cover me actually doing the install. Um, not very exciting, but uh, just to give you the confidence and to see what you do expect when you actually do it, and it takes me uh, 12 minutes or so. So this is my Power 8 
S824. Got an L bar here ready to install Ubuntu. And we'll just start that up. Here's my console. I'll stop it and uh, we're going to five for boot options. One. See what we can boot off. I want to boot off the optical DVD. Here we go. That's already something else on the disc. I forget what it is now. But we want to go for three. Normal. Confirm. So now booting off the Ubuntu DVD. There we go. Um, I'd like to actually have a quick look in here. If we hit E, we can see this is the uh, parameters that it's actually using to boot off. Nothing particularly scary in here. And that's good. We do an escape, we go back, and we'll look to the install. Just let it go. Okay, came back to the same place. We'll just hit return again. Sometimes it has to go to the uh, open firmware to set things and then comes back and asks to have another go with uh, the new settings. So uh, English looks good. Um, we'll in the UK. I knew the IP version 6 would work. Here's DHCP. That won't work either. Not in my computer room. Okay, didn't work. So we'll do a manual network configuration. Asking me for an IP address. And a net mask. Um, good guess. I like programs that go for the one that's most often come up. We uh, gateway dot one. Yep. Good guess. Name server. Well, it's unlikely to be that. So it's a dot two for us in our computer room. Look at that. It's actually talked to the DNS server and worked out that I'm probably called VM20, and you are. And it's got the name in right. Full marks. Full name of new user. Well, that would be me. But it doesn't like you logging in as root ever. In fact, I don't think it's going to ask me for a root password in here. Well, I've always used a nice little short name. Give it a password twice. It says it's weak. Yes, I know. It's only a crash and burn system, so we're okay. Encrypt home directory. Oh, we'll skip that, I think. Let's make life a little bit easier. Partition the disk. Well, I don't want to share the disk. This is a server. Just carved it out. A piece of disk. It's not a real disk, is it? And uh, it's a virtual disk. I certainly don't want to share the disk with a bit of Windows or anything mucky like that. So uh, select the disk. Yep. And uh, it's <laughs> look at that. It's found this fedora on the disk. <laughs> uh, yep, that's the idea. Let's try and overwrite that. So yes, permission, and off it goes, doing some install. Um, do you want to change the disk? All right, right now it's the commit point. I'm just going to put two file systems in there, swap, and some root. That looks good.
internal header files, it seems to pause for quite a while. It actually stays on 83% for quite a lot of the time. Just be patient. If I can be patient, you probably can be as well. Anyway, Linux headers, this one takes quite a while. There we go, nearly two minutes, it started moving again. 95%, there we go. And it goes through this sort of things lots of times. Um, proxy to get to the outside world, as opposed to the inside world. But um, no, I don't need anything special there. It may not actually get out, so it needs uh, some DNS settings for our computer room. As uh, Ubuntu is just out, uh, there's nothing likely to be out there for it to download anyway. Um, no automatic updates, that's the way I like it. I like stability, and then I decide when things get updated. This is not a workstation. Cleaning up, sounds positive. Grub, that's even better. Getting ready to boot off the disk. I do want to use UTC, well that's nearly Greenwich Mean Time, and it's finished, so we'll continue. I do find it takes a little while at the start up in here, so again, we're just going to be a little bit patient. Counting down. Looks good. And we're there. So it's my little user energy. And we're in. About system D log in the failure starts, but otherwise looks okay. Let's just do a quick um, if we got the right operating system here. Uh, star ease, etc. Star ease. There we go, we got Ubuntu uh, 14.10. Doesn't actually say that it's a little Indian in here, uh, but that's okay. And we'll Clear that. There we go. LSCPU. Yes, it is. It's Little Indian. It's these uh, 16 CPUs. That's um, two CPU calls and eight threads. Looks good. 
and it's on the S824, as we know, back to front, but there we are. It's running on top of P-Hype, and uh, this looks good indeed. A quick reminder then, the combination that we've actually been using, uh, Ubuntu for power, 14... 10, which is Little Indian. That's running alongside all our big Indian, the VO servers, AIX, IBMI, SLES, and uh, Rails 6 and 7. I've actually had all of those running on my machine at the same time, so that's, that all works fine. Uh, this is Power 8 only. If you do try um, older machines, particularly the Power 7, Power 7 Plus, uh, leave a comment below if you get it working, or if you don't get it working, it'd be good to know, save some other people some time. Uh, latest firmware, of course, um, and the uh, matching HMC. I've used single and dual VO server, that didn't cause any problems. Using a pure virtual disk, network and DVD, no physical adapters. I can't say running physical adapters in virtual machines is uh, that clever an idea, unless you have very specific requirements. And I used it on the scale-out machines and on the enterprise machine, uh, no problems across the range. Well that's it for this video, here's my usual advert for places you can find me on the internet. Don't forget if you've liked this movie, then please click on a like below. Thank you very much.